CompTIA A+, Core 2, Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 2.9, Given a Scenario, Configure Appropriate Security Settings on Small Office, Home Office, Wireless, and Wired Networks. Home Router Settings. When setting up or securing a small office, home office, also referred to as a Soho network, proper security configurations are critical. It safeguards your network from unauthorized access, maintains reliable connectivity, and keeps your data secure. In this video segment, we'll explore key security settings for Soho networks, following along with CompTSA Plus Core 2 Exam Objective 2.9. So get ready, your network security is about to get an upgrade. First things first, your Soho router is the bouncer of your network. It stands between your devices and the vast, wild internet, making it your first line of defense against potential intrusions. In order to protect this device from would-be attackers, a quick change to the default username and password should be performed ASAP. Most routers come with generic admin credentials that make it way too easy for hackers to crash your digital party. Many routers will even nudge you to do this during setup, so don't ignore it and instead put it first on the list. Now that your router's credentials are locked down, let's talk about Mac filtering. No, this isn't about restricting access to Apple devices. This type of Mac filtering it's all about restricting access based on a device's media access control address, also known as a Mac address. Think of a Mac address like the fingerprint of each device on your network. By enabling Mac filtering, you can create a guest list of approved devices meaning, only trusted devices, will be allowed to join your network. It's a solid extra layer of security, because if someone tries to sneak in without an invite, they'll be promptly shown the door. Now, when was the last time you updated your router's firmware? Much like how you wouldn't let your smartphone run on outdated software, your router's firmware needs attention too. Firmware updates often include critical security patches and improvements, keeping your network one step ahead of the bad guys. Next up, we have content filtering. If you're running a family-friendly network or just trying to keep distractions in check, content filtering is a handy feature. This lets you block certain websites or content categories, sift through emails, or monitor network traffic based on specified rules. So whether the intention is to keep inappropriate materials at bay or just ensuring your employees don't spend all day watching cat videos, content filtering is your ally. Oh, and don't forget about physical security. It's not just about fancy encryption and passwords. Make sure your router is in a secure location, preferably not somewhere anyone can easily tamper with it. Leaving it out in the open is like hiding the keys to the house under the welcome mat, don't make it that easy. On the network side, we have DHCP reservations. But before we get too technical, let's break this down. DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, is a networking service that automates the configuration of devices on an IP network. If that sounds confusing, just think of it as your network's personal valet service. Every time a device joins the network, DHCP hands it an IP address from a reserved pool, similar to a valet providing parking in a reserved parking lot. It's automated, simple, and hassle-free. But sometimes, you may want a specific device, like your printer or a server, to always have the same IP address. That's where DHCP reservations come in handy. By using a device's unique MAC address, you can reserve a specific IP address for that device. This ensures that every time the device connects, it gets the same IP address, which is particularly useful for remote access or when you need a stable, reliable connection. In addition to setting a DHCP reservation for a local IP address, there may be times when setting up a static WAN or wide area network IP address for the router will be necessary. If you've got services that need a consistent public IP address, like a web server, setting up a static wide area network IP ensures that your network's front door to the internet doesn't move. Imagine running a business where the store's physical address keeps changing every day. Customers would get frustrated trying to find you, and eventually, they might just give up. In the same way, if your wide area network IP address keeps changing, it's like your digital storefront is constantly relocating, making it hard for customers to find you. A static IP is like locking down that address, ensuring your store stays in the same spot, 
so visitors know exactly where to find your website or services every time. It brings consistency and reliability to your internet presence, much like a fixed address does for a brick and mortar store. Next up, a word of caution about Universal Plug and Play. Universal Plug and Play, which is abbreviated as UPnP, is a set of networking protocols that allows devices on the same network to discover and automatically connect to each other. Sounds like a dream, right? Devices on your network automatically finding and connecting with each other? But hold up. While UPnP makes it easy for a device, like your smart TV to talk to another device, like a media server, it can also leave the door wide open for malicious devices to sneak in and open ports without your permission. So, unless you really need it, it's best to disable UPnP and avoid giving hackers a free pass to your network. Last, but not least, let's talk about creating a screen subnet, also known as a DMZ, or demilitarized zone. Imagine your network as a secure building, with the most critical systems and sensitive data stored inside. Now, picture a fenced-off area outside the building where you can place devices that need to interact with the public, like web servers or email servers. This fenced-off area, or DMZ, allows those devices to engage with the outside world while keeping them at a safe distance from your main network. Think of it like this. Visitors can access services in the fenced area, but they can't just stroll into the building where your important systems are kept. If anything in the DMZ, like a web server, or email server, gets compromised, it's confined to that outer area, preventing intruders from getting past the fence and reaching the heart of your network. This adds a crucial layer of security, ensuring that even if something goes wrong in the DMZ, the rest of your network remains protected. The DMZ is perfect for situations where you need to expose services to the internet without putting the core of your network at risk. To sum it all up, securing your Soho network isn't just about locking the front door, it's about building a multi-layered defense that keeps the bad guys out and your data safe. From changing default passwords to keeping your router's firmware up to date, enabling Mac filtering, and setting up a DMZ, each step brings you closer to a secure, reliable network. And remember, whether you're protecting a small business or your own home network, a little proactive effort goes a long way in keeping everything running smoothly. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.